Hey there, there's a problem with the pinpoint stance on the serve. Actually, there's more than one problem. And I wanna tell you about that today so that you're not making these mistakes on your serve if you have a pinpoint stance, or if you're even thinking about it having a pinpoint stance. Hi, this is Jeff Salzenstein, founder of Tennis Evolution, former top 100 ATP pro. And as a USTA high performance coach, I am committed to helping players all over the world with their serves and with their games. And actually many players have referred to me as the serve surgeon because I have dissected the serve, giving just gone into so much detail to understand it so I can break it down for you. And today we're gonna to talk about the pinpoint stance. Now, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I'm a platform guy. I like to get into a platform stance, solid base, push off of both feet. But I know there's a lot of players out there that don't do that. They focus on the pinpoint. And you know what? If it works for you, if you're serving well, I'm not going to stop you, okay? I'm gonna let you serve in a pinpoint if it works for you. But I am gonna present some problems today and some possible solutions that can help you. Sound good? All right, let's get going. So on the pinpoint stance, you know, there's a reason that people do it. They, they feel like many players actually feel like they can move this foot up and they feel like they have better rhythm and momentum, okay? And that's great, but here's some of the problems that occur when you have a pinpoint stance. Number one, I feel more things can go wrong. You see, as soon as you start moving this foot, you're introducing an extra variable into the serve. You have to be able to sync up the movement of the back leg to the toss, to your turn, to your arms moving. And so that is definitely something that throws players off. Too many variables, an extra variable. You know, if you're in a platform stance and you can just get solid in this stance, guess what? All you have to do is bend your knees and go, all right? But as soon as you have that pinpoint, again, you're adding an extra variable. So I like to simplify things. And one analogy I like to use is I love, I love steak, okay? I eat red meat about once a week, all right? And I like fillets. I like the fillet. Let's just trim the fat off. And when it comes to the serve, I want to trim the fat off of your serve. And so if you add in a pinpoint, you are adding, in my opinion, a little bit more fat. So if you like a ribeye, you can go ahead and focus on having a little fat on your serve if it works for you. But again, I like the filet. Let's trim the fat, let's keep it simple. Let's get in the platform, bend the knees and go. Okay, so one problem, as I mentioned, is there's one more variable involved. If you still have great rhythm with it, you can just ignore what I just said. It's just what I've observed over time and what I think can help players. All right, so you got that extra variable. What else can go wrong? Well, I have found, and this, this might be the biggest problem, is that players, players lose their shoulder turn over time when they're in a pinpoint stance. So what do I mean by that? Well, I really try to get people on their first move to work on turning their shoulders with their first move like this. A lot of players move with their arms and you can see the arms are moving but the shoulders aren't turning. And this is the kiss of death for the surf. So what happens is when I put someone in a platform stance and I set them up like this, it's easier to, it's easy to turn along this line right here because the foot is set in this platform stance. All right, <coughs> excuse me, got a slight cold, but we're working through it here. When I move, when I move this foot up, and especially if I, I see a lot of players with the pinpoint, they move this foot up, which I think is a no-no. If we're gonna do a pinpoint, we should probably bring it up in here. But we're gonna bring it here, okay? And guess what? It's a lot harder to turn the shoulders when you're in this position or keep your shoulders turned. Did Goran Ivanisevic do it? Yes, but he's also a world-class athlete. Unless you're a world-class athlete watching this video, even if you are, it's more difficult to turn the shoulders. I feel a stretch in here. And the stretch you can pull off, but most people, guess what? When they bring this foot up, they're going to face the net and they're not going to turn their shoulders. It's gonna create a lot of problems, possibly some shoulder problems. 
So I've noticed, especially with one player that I've worked with over the years, is that when I've gotten her in a platform and I spend time with her, her turn is amazing. And then she'll call me or she'll email me or text me and say, oh, I, I want to do the pinpoint now. And I'm like, okay, great. And then I'll watch her video two months later and guess what? She's in this position, but her elbow now is here instead of here. So over time with a pinpoint, you can lose your shoulder turn, which is again, the kiss of death for the serve. And we don't want you to lose that shoulder turn. Again, that's why I like platform, this position. So now I can turn along this line easier. If, as soon as I move this foot up, it's harder to turn along that line. When I move that foot up, now my foot is, my arms want to go more in this position typically. Okay. So more variables when you move the back foot. A problem with the shoulder turn, you learn, lose shoulder turn over time. Not all the time, but some players do. And then <clears throat> you can also, with that pinpoint, you can also lose rhythm. I've found that when players toss the ball and they wait and then they move their back foot, it throws their rhythm off. And that's a challenge, right? You're in your pinpoint, you toss the ball, you wait before you move this foot, then you finally move the foot. Now the toss gets too high, your rhythm is off, it's not fluid, and the ball drops too much, and you lose your timing, and you lose your confidence. So that's another problem with the pinpoint, is that you can actually delay the motion, and it can be too slow to develop. There are players on the tour that actually toss the ball and wait before they move this foot and they make it work for them. So I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying this is what I've observed over the years, what's happened with players when they go to a pinpoint. All right, the final problem that I see, and I'm sure there's more, but these are the ones we're gonna talk about today, is that when you are in a pinpoint, if you, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier actually, if you bring this foot up like this, you're gonna be facing the net too much. You're not going to be sideways when you make contact. You're not going to be in this position. You're going to be facing the net. And there's no way that you can serve up to your potential if you bring this foot up and you're facing the net. You just can't do it. You're only going to be able to come around it. You can't hit topspin. You're going to lose disguise. And so if anything, with your pinpoint, when you move this foot up, you should still keep it behind the front foot like this so that you can get your turn in your disguise. As soon as this foot comes up like this, we're in trouble, okay? So consider, if you're in a pinpoint, I just want you to be aware of these things, right? You gotta keep your motion moving. You gotta make sure that you keep your shoulder turn. You gotta keep this foot behind like this, right? And keep that rhythm and tempo going. But if, if, if I've identified any problems that you think you have on your pinpoint, you might want to consider a platform so that you can reduce those variables, get the shoulder turn, and make things more simple. Now, I hope you enjoyed this dissertation on the pinpoint stance today. I really enjoyed breaking it down for you. You can tell I've thought about this a lot, and I'm all about giving you real tangible information that can help you make better decisions when you're on the tennis court, help you become a better player. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure you give us a thumbs up. The more positive comments, the better. Even if you didn't like this video, you can let me know as well. I can take the heat. Really appreciate your time today. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you've got your notifications turned on so that you can be updated on future videos that we release. And finally, I want you to take a little more action today. Click the link in the description below to pick up or to learn what your number one serve destroyer is. There's a short quiz that I'm gonna have you take. I gotta get some answers to make sure that I know what your number one specific serve destroyer is. I'm gonna provide that answer for you along with the solution. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click the link in the description to take that 30 second quiz or click the link somewhere in this video. I'm here to help. I'm here to take you to the next level. Stay with me on this. This is gonna be a fun journey. Take that quiz and let's keep going. Thanks so much for your time today. See you next time.